In this video, I will discuss what we can learn from the inverted yield curve in 2021. Before speaking about what we can learn from the inverted yield curve, it's important to discuss what is the inverted yield curve. Now, the inverted yield curve became popular through Campbell Harvey's dissertation in 1986. He made the case that every recession that he's come across, there's been a yield curve inversion where short-term rates yield higher than long-term rates, and he's been correct in the last eight recessions. Now, when the yield curve inverts, it's an indication that bond investors are not, are not wanting to lend out money in the short term due to fears of the economy and what can happen in the near term. Now, less investments in short-term bonds leads to higher short-term bond yields. The most recent yield curve inversions occurred in 1978, 1982, 1989, 2000, 2006, and 2019. The yield curve inversion is important because it gives us a timeline on when a recession may occur. In this chart, you can see that the three-month Treasury bond yield exceeds the 10-year Treasury bond yield at a certain point. Now, that is when the yield curve inverts. Now, this is a signal of fear in the market because typically the 10-year Treasury bond will yield higher because they're lending out the money for a longer period of time. But because there's fear in the market, the Treasury bond yields for the short term are higher for a period of time. I will be discussing the lessons that I learned from the inverted yield curve in the order in which I've learned those lessons. So number one, we can track the time frame between when the yield curve first inverts and the bottom of the market for previous crashes. Number two, we can track what the percent level of the inverted yield curve was at for the beginning of previous recessions to guide us for future recessions. Number three, we can track the percent level of the inverted yield curve when the stock market reached its lowest point in previous crashes. Number four, we can track the average duration between yield curve inversions. Number five, we can project how high the 10-year Treasury yield will go in a particular time frame based on past performance of the inverted yield curve. Number six, we can compare the average performance of the inverted yield curve and compare it to the current performance. Number seven, we can track stock performance after the yield curve departs inversion. There's a time duration correlation between when the yield curve inverts and the bottom of the market. Now, we're currently in April 2021. It's been 24 months since the yield curve inverted in 2019. Now, when we reached the bottom of the market in March of 2020, that was 13 months after the yield curve inverted. Now, if you take a look at 2006, 36 months after the yield curve inverted, we reached the bottom of the market. Now, if you add 36 months to April of 2019, the date would be April of 2022. This could help us narrow down the time frame of a potential crash. And you can see the average duration between when we inverted and the bottom of the market. It was 22 months. And we're currently at 24 months. But keep in mind, we have a lot of stimulus pushing the market up. In this chart, it's showing the duration between when the yield curve inverted and the bottom of the market, as I just spoke about. And you can see visually here, 36 months be between the time period of the inversion and the bottom of the market for 2009. And we're currently at tw 24 months. Here I'm looking at the percent level of the inverted yield curve when the recessions began. Now you can see negative 0.89, negative 0.9, 0 0.2, 0 0.51, 0 0.99, 0 0.47. There doesn't seem to be a whole lot of correlation, but there does seem to be correlation when it comes to the last three. If you average out those last three of 0 0.51, 0 0.99, 0 0.47, you're looking at an average of 0.65 on the inverted yield curve when the recession began. This is the chart of the inverted yield curve. The yield curve inverts, and then we reach the bottom of the market in these three indicators in green, black, and red. In green, you can see in February 2009, we reached 2.76 when the bottom of the market was reached. And then in red, you can see we reached 2.06 in 
in 2002 when the bottom of the market was reached. And in black, you can see we reached the bottom of the market at 1.31 in 1990. And you can see it's gradually stepping up over time. In this bar graph, I show six times that the yield curve inverts. And I looked at the time duration between those inversions. Now, when you average it all out, the average time duration between inversions is 98 months. And if that stays consistent, we could get in the ballpark of the next inversion by July 2027. The inverted yield curve can be helpful in projecting the 10-year Treasury bond yield. We can project the 10-year Treasury bond yield by tracking past performance of the inverted yield curve after it departed inversion. We departed inversion in April 2020. In the yield inversion of 1989, 2000, and 2006, we reached 3% by the 30th month after departing yield inversion. We will reach month 30 by October of 2022. In the next slide, I will show the monthly data points for 50 months after departing yield inversion. I will also show the chart that maps out the performance of the inverted yield curve for the 1989, 2000, and 2006 yield inversions. In this chart, you can see in green where we're currently at at month 13, and we're at 1.67 on the inverted yield curve currently. Now, if you take a look at month 30, you can see the other three data points of 1989, 2000, and 2006 were steadily getting into the 3% range. As far as I'm able to tell at this point, we could be headed towards a 10-year Treasury yield of 3%. Now, 30 months after departing the yield curve inversion, that would bring us to October of 2022. So that potentially could get us close to the peak of the 10-year Treasury bond yield. In this chart, I add the average performance of the inverted yield curve, and you can see that in the black line. The average performance of the inverted yield curve reached 3% in the 12th month after departing yield curve inversion. We're currently lagging that a little bit. The uh, performance is currently at 1.67. We're in month 13 after departing inversion, which is about an average of 0.128% increase in the yield per month. It's important to take a look at how stocks performed after departing yield curve inversion now you can see in 2000 in the blue line when we inverted in that year we dropped about 30 percent and we got to that point by month 20 and then you can see in red for the 2006 inversion we dropped as much as 50 percent and in that range of 20 months after departing inversion but in orange, you can see we went in the exact opposite direction, exceeding 50% for the S&P 500. And I do believe that that's being influenced by a record level of stimulus. And in my view, I'm interpreting this as a delay in the sell-off. And potentially, the sell-off could increase in volume when it does occur. It's important to take a look at the key takeaways from this presentation. Number one, the average time between when the yield curve first inverts and when the bottom of the market is reached is 22 months. Number two, 36 months after the yield curve inverted in 2006, we reached the bottom of the market. If you add 36 months to April of 2019, the date would be April of 2022 for a potential bottom of the market. Number three, in the past three yield curve inversions, the average yield was 0.65 at the start of the recession. Number four, the average time between yield curve inversions is 98 months. Number five, in the yield inversion of 1989, 2000, and 2006, we reached 3% by the 30th month after departing yield inversion. We will reach month 30 by October of 2022. Number six, trillions of stimulus is pushing the stock market in the opposite direction of past trends and potentially delaying a crash that could be much larger as a result.